Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today we are going to be back to working on these little segment gears for the Monarch 10 E Metal A that I'm helping to fill out on. And uh, I think we're to the final couple of steps here. Should finish these up today and be able to get them in the mail to them. So we started out with a broken gear. We made some new gears. And uh, right now they all need to be cut off on the back and just kind of have that profile put into them. And also, um, Ginger's going to come over here and check us out. But also we need to drill a couple of little holes in here, very precision holes. Uh, these are for some uh, pins that go down and actually hold it in place. So we're going to need to locate those holes on one set of these. The other ones I'm not going to put holes in because the holes may be different um, on each one. I'm not sure if those, they used a jig to do those or whether they just kind of freehand them and put them in place. So I'm only going to put the holes in one set. So let me kind of zoom you in here and show you what we got and we'll get going. So here are the parts and questions. And if you haven't watched the previous episodes on how we made these, you can go back and watch those. But uh, these are made out of cast iron, just like the original. Um, one of them, I actually did both sides. That was so that I could get a measurement on the diameter as well as a measurement on the depth of the gears. I only need half of it. The other ones, we just kind of did one side and we're going to cut the backs off all the same length on all of these. This backside will just be cut off of this one uh, to kind of match the original. The original was cast iron. These, this is just a rough casting around the edge. I think they probably had a blank of this and they just sawed them with the bandsaw and uh, made the parts from those blanks. Uh, but we're going to at least get the profile the same. So I'm going to, I think what I'm going to do is just this back edge is nothing critical about it at all. Like I said, the original is just a rough casting. Uh, I'm just going to take a Sharpie pen. I'm going to trace it on there. That'll give me a line to go to. We'll probably cut these off and then I'll use my belt sander to actually put that profile on there. So let me grab a Sharpie pen. I'm just kind of lining up that bore on the inside. There we go. We'll do this on all of them. All right, I think we got them all marked. I've got this clamped over here, my Metal Devil cut off saw, and we're just going to saw that excess off close to that line. Got a Scotch Bright wheel here and just uh, deburn it. And that does a good job of cleaning that up. Next step is to figure out what size hole to drill for these two little pin holes that are in here. And um, I'm, I've got a set of pin gauges here. If you're not familiar with pin gauges, these are precision ground um, gauge pins. And basically they're in one thousandth increments. This is my set that goes from 61 thousandths up to 250 thousandths or a quarter of an inch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start, let's just start with this one right here and that one doesn't fit. What I'm trying to do is just figure out where I'm at. So we'll go 70. That one doesn't fit. I'm going to go 65. Okay, that one fits good. Let's go up to 66. Okay, that one's getting a little bit tighter, but it's still fitting. Here's a 67 thousandths. Okay, that one that one feels just about right. 
67 thousandths. I'm going to go to 68. And a 68, I mean, I can make it go, but it's, it's, it's tight. It starts to go, but I mean, it's just not slipping through there. So it's probably somewhere between 67 and 68 thousandths, somewhere in that ballpark. I'm going to go now and look and see what size drill bit I've got that's close to that. And that'll be what we drill it with. So let me go check my chart. So I lost some audio here. So I'm going to do a little voiceover and tell you what's going on a little bit of this. But basically, I needed to figure out the drill bit size. And using the pin gauges, we measured 67 thousandths. I looked those up on my chart. And it turns out that the number 51 drill bit is exactly 67 thousandths. The number 50 measured 70 thousandths. The 52 was about 63 and a half. So we're going with that 70 thousandths drill bit. And before I drill these together, I want to get these aligned and put together uh, so that we can make sure that those little pins are lined up with the bore. And to do that, I got this little bronze bushing that actually was in the original part, and it is wide enough or thick enough there to go through both pieces. And, and again, we're just doing this for alignment. Uh, that's going to give us perfect alignment between those two parts so that when we drill out those holes, they will match up exactly right, which is the game plan here. So we're going to go over to the Arbor Press, and uh, I'm going to take that bronze bushing that we had, and we're just going to press it right in there. It is a, a, a you know press fit, interference fit, probably about a thousandths oversize. And we're going to take the Arbor Press and just press down on there, put that part in there. Once we get it into the uh, bottom part, next we're going to take and press the other part on top of there. I'm taking care to try to keep it aligned side to side, and uh, we push that one down on there. Uh, there it goes, and the two parts are just, a, are the, the bushing is just a little bit wider than the two parts, so it needed to push down just a little bit farther. I get them lined up perfectly right, and to get that last little bit, I just took a socket that was a little bit larger diameter than that bushing, and that's giving me good pressure all the way around, and we just press it that last little bit home. And uh, we got them on there. And that's a nice tight fit. It's not going anywhere. From there, over to the milling machine. And I'm using the milling machine because I want the, my variable speed. And a small drill bit like this, we need to run it pretty high RPMs. I have got a little small chuck there that I found. And it's up in a collet in the milling machine. I already had a little stem on the back. And we're going to fire that joker up and, and just basically go down through the existing holes that are already there. We're going to use those holes as a template. I'm sitting on top of a piece of wood so that when I come out, I'm not going to drill through my vise or anything like that. Uh, we got a little bit of waste in the bottom, but we're just going to drill straight down through there and go right down that old hole. Again, using the original holes as a guide. And that way, we'll know that those pins should line up perfectly with the old part, at least on this particular one here. So once we get the second one done here, I think we'll be done with our drilling and looks like we're done right there. We're back over here at the Arbor Press and I've got a little piece of metal here that should be large enough to catch the inside of that, small enough to not catch the outside of it. And let's see if we can just push that right out. Well, what are we hitting on? There it goes. And there we go. Well, there we go. We got our new segment gear all made. This one matches the old one just right. Got the same holes. Uh, I'm going to send Tom an extra one here. Uh, he asked for an extra one just so in case he breaks another one and needs to do another one down the road at some point in time, he'll have a spare. Uh, I've got two extras here. I'm going to keep these for myself. I've got the same uh, Monarch 10 E in my shop. And at some point in time, I'll be doing a restoration. And it's likely that I'm going to need one of these for mine. And again, I'll have me a, an extra one laying around uh, in case I ever need a, a spare myself. So that was going to work out really good. And uh, I'm going to get these packed up and head it back over to Tom. 
And there you go, uh, one more little project knocked out. Uh, I'm real happy with how these turned out. I think these segment gears are going to work just fine. Uh, fun little project, uh, interesting little project. Had some unique challenges in it uh, to, to figure out, uh, and that's what I'm always liking. I like a good challenge out here in the shop. It was an extremely difficult part to make, but it, it did require a lot of steps and some thinking and pre-planning uh, to get there. And um, I think Tom will be happy with the uh, outcome. And uh, like he told me, Monarch would sell them one. They had to make them, but they were super, super expensive. Uh, I was able to do these for considerably less. So uh, anyway, there you go. And with that, guys, that will be a wrap on both this episode as well as this series of videos on making the segment gears for the Monarch 10 E lathe. Guys, I would ask, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to my channel. Uh, please send those comments in as well as those thumbs up. Always appreciate that. And I hit that bell icon up there so that you get some notifications when new videos are posted to my, to my uh, channel here. And with that, we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.